matching hundreds. It's a coach, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Coming up, we'll see teams with a couple of running backs who each went over 100 yards a weekend to go, as it'll be the Baltimore Ravens taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. With that, let's get up to Cincinnati for the home opener. Standing by, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Coach, it's the NFL on EA Sports, and there you get a look at Paul Brown Stadium on the banks of the Ohio River in Cincinnati. This crowd loves their orange and black. The scene just a short time ago, they were in full roar as their guys burst out of the locker room. We're ready for football as the Bengals get set to do battle with the Baltimore Ravens. Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gordon to my left, Charles Davis. And Charles, you focus on this Bengal team entering play. They come in off a good win on the road, and now they hit the home opener at 1-0. And they looked awfully good last week and came away with a two-touchdown victory. They did have a few reasons for concern defensively, but all in all, they'll take a repeat here if they could get it. Meanwhile, for the visiting Ravens, they too were winners last time out, so something's got to give here. Two teams here fresh off week one victories who can keep it going as we're underway on EA Sports. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. Here come the Bengals now to take over. And they will be led out by their six-foot-six six quarterback. I read something prepping for this game that he said prior to, and I think he really said it a few months ago, where he talked about he wants to have the type of season that at the end, he's buying gifts for all the guys who have helped him <laughs> along the way. And I know that the team wants to hold him to that and really get into his wallet. But that's what good leadership gives you. You know, at the end of the season, because you've done a great job, let's go. QB, he's usually the guy springs for the good stuff. They'll try and start this drive in the air. This one grabbed by A.J. Green. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. The numbers for Green a week ago, four catches, 58 yards, and a score. And I'd certainly expect them to use him quite a bit because he runs excellent routes, has good hands, and knows how to get open. I don't care who you put on him, go. he's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. It's a gain of 13, and the Bengals have a first down. Well, no slow start here. A couple nice chunk plays back-to-back. -back. I love the momentum that they're showing here early because they did it both ways, right? Threw the ball on first down for a nice chunk of yardage. Came right back and ran the ball. Looks like they've got the defense set back on their heels. Let's see if they can keep this moving. Back-to-back -back good plays. Have them on the move on first down. They go play action here on first down. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. And a look now at the Cincinnati offense. Out wide, they have A.J. Green who can run every route you want on the route tree and take the top over the defense with his speed and has the length to go over the top of people to catch the ball. But maybe the most impressive thing about him the right, only go. wide receiver Green, ever to be a pro Green, bowler in his first seven years in the NFL. On second down, here's Mixon. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. And here are the Raven defensive starters. Linebackers still often control defenses, and C.J. Mosley does exactly that for his. A pro bowler three of his first four years. Not only can he run and hit, he diagnoses plays so well, feels them out, and makes sure his team is organized and in the right spot on each and every snap. Now let's go! Three, nine, Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And that's complete to the foul. And he'll take this into the end zone for Bengal TD. Brandon LaFell, his second touchdown on the season. And the Bengals are going to take a first-quarter lead. With the 
Thursday night game, sometimes you get those quick turnarounds. You wonder how a team is going to start. They started really well. Everyone's always wondering, going into a Thursday night game, who has their legs, who has a, you know the overall health of a team. But mentally, if you get that early edge, the other team might think to itself, ah, oh, it's been a short week. We're not really ready to go. You might run them into the ground that way. That's why getting that early score means a lot. Bullock good on the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. So that drive spanned five plays, and it's finished off with a Cincinnati touchdown. Bullock out now to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. So now the Ravens getting ready for their first go on offense. They'll be led out by their rookie quarterback. He is a young pup, just 21 years of age out of Pompano Beach, Florida. It's Lamar Jackson. And when you handicap the race for the starting quarterback position in Baltimore, you realize you're looking at two different types of quarterbacks entirely. Joe Flacco, big, strong pocket quarterback. Lamar Jackson, something so different. Set ACC record for most rushing yards and rushing touchdowns by a quarterback in a single season. Now we give to Collins, and he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eighth. And this whole line, it is the lifeblood of the offense. They established the tone. Mean, nasty, physical. They can't wait to get after people. That allows the rest of the offense to feel confident. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Here we go now. Green, 39. They'll run it here. This is Buck Allen. He'll be tackled shy of the 35. Shifty footwork gets him a little extra on the play. I thought that was a good call. Passing situation on second down. They hit him with a draw instead and pick up nice yardage. Yeah, because the draw, they're thinking pass when they see that initially defensively, right? Well, you know in today's NFL, most of the time on second and long when it's a passing situation, pass rushers are on the field and they're only thinking one thing, get to the quarterback. And oftentimes you can bypass them with a running play. They'll try and run for it with Collins. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. That's a tremendous group there effort there now. because when you talk about offensive lines, the best ones talk about guys that play in harmony, in sync, and getting things done. And they did that on that play. Yeah, especially on third and one. Got to be in sync, and they were. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. And the Bengals starting defensive unit now. Emerging as an anchor in the linebacking core is Carl Lawson, who went in the fourth round out of Auburn and gave them eight sacks as a rookie. Have to say that for most people, they would call that a steal. How did he get it done, though? Speed, power, ability to see plays happen and make sure he's in the right spot. Jackson now on second and ten. It's brought in complete. It's John Brown. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Now, Charles, what's the mindset here offensively? You gave up the touchdown pretty quickly. Would it have changed if you had gotten a stop and it would be 0-0 right now or no? I wouldn't think so. I think in most cases, just down a touchdown, you know, I mean, we're just getting started here. It should be a long way to go. You think to yourself, stick with the game plan, all the things you worked out in practice. But you have some teams that when they get down, their natural tendency is to aggressively strike back. And let's see if they want to get outside of the game plan we expect and try and be aggressive on their first series. And out now, here come the Bengals. And coming up on their second drive of the game, had the touchdown last time out. Now they have the football back. Chance to really seize early momentum. Feels to me like they had a really excellent week of practice and it all came together. But I'll bet you it got galvanized in the locker room in pregame. Somehow I think the head coach, his oratorical skills were on point. Now a play fake here on first down. Brought in here by Tyler Eifert. And he gets this one just shy of the 35 to the 34. 
A very solid gain of 27. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? That sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Mixon with a first down carry. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. All right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing with their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. He'll drop to throw. And his throw's going to be incomplete. They went with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. They'll set up a throw. Going deep for Eifert. And incomplete. He can't hang on. Would have been a nice catch. Instead, it brings up a fourth down. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. The Ravens offense now, they get set to head back on the field. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? The numbers for Collins last week, very, very strong, well over 100 yards. He should get the ball early and often here, too. I mean, when you're riding the performance of last week into this game, his confidence level has to be off the charts. Go ahead and keep feeding him. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, this big now. defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. A tackle for loss there, two last week. He's right, tough to handle coming off the edge. I mean, talk about a defensive end, your first thought is how does he... The Bengal pressure gets him that time, down he goes. Geno Atkins able to drop him for a loss of two, and that'll bring up fourth down. Well, the pass rush has been a real strength of late. They know how to get after the quarterback. Absolutely, four sacks last week. That's their first one here. Anything in particular you've seen from them or on film? I think that they're winning athletically up front, winning those one-on-one -on -one battles, but also when the offensive line wants to keep everyone in and mass protect, they know how to scheme their way back to the quarterback as well. This is taken at the 23. <laughs> A great return there of 22 yards. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. And across midfield he goes into Raven territory. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Next to receivers, they'll spread the defense out, and they were able to come through with a slashing run. But to that point, it's going to be interesting to see the personnel chess match as this one progresses. Yeah, you're exactly right. Can they continue to create running lanes out of passing sets? And if so, it's going to be a long day for the defense. Now let's go! They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get it down here to the 43. Two yards on the pickup there, but it's enough to give them a new set of downs. 
second and one and people want to run the football, this is what every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there, pick up the first down. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited right, about hitting him in the Green, first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. Charles, Thursday night game, I think a lot of teams probably say shrink the playbook somewhat. Is that correct? I think you're right about that because you just don't have the amount of time that you have in a normal week to put in a full playbook. So as you said, you shrink the playbook, pick out the plays that work best for you, and you know what else you're looking for? What's that? Who are the freshest guys coming off of the last game to play on a Thursday night? Guys have a little extra pep in their step. You go to them early and often. They'll look to throw here. Going deep downfield for Ross. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. So coming on now is the field goal unit. They're going to try for three, and he'll need all the leg he's got here. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt, and this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot, and this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target, and knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. They've had it twice. They've punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice. So they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Now it appears we've got an injured Raven down there on the field. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. Well, the first play of the drive lost four. Now they'll look to move it forward here on second and 14. Second down, here's Jackson. Over the middle into traffic, and that's complete. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. The Ravens on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third down and 12. Hurry up, here we go. Jackson from the shotgun. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Sean Williams there defensively to break that one up. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. Sam Cook now as he's on to punt for Baltimore. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. Joe Mixon and the rest of his offense making their way back onto the field. A tough challenge here in this one. We'll see if he can duplicate the numbers on your screen that he put up last week, up over 100 and a touchdown. We we're watching tape to prepare for this game. One thing you noted that I totally agree with, Great complimentary piece in the last game. You know, they were able to throw it pretty well. He ran it exceptionally, and they hope to continue that same formula in this game. Complimentary with an E, not an I. That's my English teacher right there. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker, and what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one... 
He looked like one of those guys. Hurry up, here we go. Boom, Looking to throw. And that's off the mark, incomplete. The linebacker, C.J. Mosley, there in coverage. Now that's twice now already in this first quarter that he's been right, able to go. knock a ball three, away. They're going to need that from him and three, plenty three, more three, if they want to slow down this passing game. Thus far, though, he's been a ball magnet. And able to find Green. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. That one good for 15, and the Bengals get a first down. Nice catch right there. Brings to mind the sentence. When in doubt, find your veterans. We used to laugh back in the day when they would call guys like him crafty veterans. You, know, you get up in your 30s, you're still playing receiver, but you're around that long at that position, you're doing something right. Just remember this. When he was young, he thought the crafty veteran was simply a guy who couldn't run anymore. Now he understands a little bit better. And got his man complete. Give him 30 yards there. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Before they can run another play, the clock hits triple zeros. And time is up on the first quarter. 7-0 is our score. We'll return to Cincinnati after this. Alongside Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, and it's the Bengals with a football to begin quarter number two. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and 10. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. First down, he'll drop to throw. And Green with a catch left side. And he gets it down to the 32. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Hurry up, here we go. Again, he'll drop to throw. And he fires one incomplete. His big tight end, Tyler Eifert, the intended receiver. And it's third and short. Tremendous coverage there. Just did not catch the football and complete the interception. But what do they say all the time? If he had really good hands, he'd be playing offense. Now the Bengals on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This time it's third and three. Now let's go. Green. They'll set up to throw. Got a man. It's Ross complete. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. His first catch there. Good for 10 yards and a first down. I think it all came together there. In breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. It's another 10 yards on that one and another first down. Now that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big-time running play and create extra space, you've kind of hit the jackpot there. They'll drop to throw. That's complete right around the eight. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. 
four yards on the play, and that leads to the first and goal. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. He can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. He'll get it up the middle, and that'll move him a little closer as he takes it from the seven down to the four-yard line. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And now they're looking for the big boys to get him in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive. Will they be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game? Well, he did get a taste the previous week. He got into the end zone, trying his best to get there in this game. So far, he's been denied. They'll look to make it three for three on third down conversions. They need a yard here. Mixon trying to punch it in. And he bowls his way into the end zone for a Bengal touchdown. A great play there. His second touchdown on the season. And the Bengals are able to grow their lead. Good start to the season for him. He had the touchdown last week in the opener and a second one in week two now. How about the pace he's already established, right? Not sure he can keep it up for an entire season, but don't burst the bubble because he thinks that he can. Do guys go into a season with a goal for touchdown scored or yardage? What do you think? I think every single one of the guys who's going to touch the football, they all have those types of goals. They all have those types of thoughts. And then they just have to see how the season unfolds if they can stay with it. Unfolding so far so good for him. Bullock out now to kick this one away. Time to discuss Michael Crabtree. You better believe that he's well aware he has zero catches right now, and they're losing, so he's probably a little hungry. And you know the guys on defense are aware as well. And they're really excited that he has no catches, but they're also worried because a lot of times, that's like the ticking time bomb. The longer you hold him down, when he finally explodes, look out. Yeah, no catches though so far in this game. They start the drive with a give to Allen. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Geno Atkins, the pro bowler, in there on the stop. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Seems like this defense, especially the secondary, has really been contesting about every throw in this first half. Remind me of a good half-court defensive basketball team. Every time a pass is thrown, they're right there and gets the good defensive position, able to affect the play. The Ravens on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This will be third and six. All right, here we go. From the gun, Jackson. Open man, it's Allen. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A good pick up there, a 22. Here we go now. Cool under Three, pressure three, right there, escaping the pocket and finding what I think was not his primary target. And some of these guys are just so comfortable getting outside of the, the pocket that they'll do it on purpose. Doesn't even need to be a breakdown. Just, I, they move, and they know it affects the defense. Because a lot of times you get lost in coverage in the secondary. And I think you're exactly right. Wasn't his primary target. Found a secondary guy who sprang open, probably because of his movement out of the pocket. Let's go. Green, well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stopped that one for a short game. What makes a good run blitz? Oh, a ball batted in the air, and now it's intercepted. Picked off by Preston Brown, the linebacker. 
He was looking for Crabtree that time. He's on quite the interception run. He had two last week, another one here. Remember, he's not a DB, he's a linebacker. But how many of those linebackers started as DBs and pumped themselves up into being linebackers? So the ball skills are the same, right? The coverage skills and responsibilities are the same, and he is paying it off in a big, big way. Now out comes their leader and the captain of this offense back onto the field. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of it. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes. But right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot. Maybe look, looking for his tight end, Eifert, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, C.J. Mosley. And they have the football that will set up shop at the 33-yard line. Well, this is one of the downsides of being a rookie quarterback. You know you're going to get called out about everything you do that goes wrong. Here, maybe he's a little uncertain about where to go with the football. And at this level, uncertainty equals turnovers. And this one winds up being intercepted. This Ravens offense heads back out there, led by Lamar Jackson. He's got to dig deep here, doesn't he? Team's losing. He's not playing well either. And they always tell you, don't press. You'll make things a little bit worse. But in this particular situation, you try and heighten your play a little bit. So far, he's thrown one interception. He wants to balance that off with at least one touchdown pass in order to get his team back moving forward. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. First red zone chance now for the Ravens. They have a first and 10 at the 13-yard line. Here's Allen. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. A gain of three, second down. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Now a carry for Allen. And this play doesn't go anywhere. Backwards, losing yardage to the 11. That'll be a loss of a yard and it leads to a third down. When you're putting together a formula for winning defense, it's exactly what we're seeing in this game. Controlling the line of scrimmage, attacking, and changing everything so that now they're playing in the offense's backfield. They're playing an excellent game. The Ravens on third down. Two for five to this point. This is third and eight. From the gun, it's Jackson. This will be caught at about the six. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping him from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now this Bengals offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. And last time wasn't pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give the quarterback <laughs> some confidence. See what happens. Here we go now. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. First play of the drive going for 14 and also going for a first down. And this is an example of breaking down a defense because in a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. 
And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. The play-action fake. They'll look to throw. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. Right, you know a coach said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player, not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. He caught Eifert over the middle, and he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A good pick up there of 20 yards. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. And that's this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Coming up at the half, a reminder, we go back to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman. He'll have a look back at our first half, as well as a look ahead to what's coming up later this weekend. Here we go now. Blue Lanny. Blue Lanny. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they see right through that defensively as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield. It'll be a loss of a yard, and just like that, it's third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable, and you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say? Play action. Yeah, without a doubt, I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? No, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. And Eifert has it. And he's able to pick up the first down before he's tackled right at the 10. The gain of five that time gives him the conversion and makes it first and goal. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. They'll give it to him up the middle, and he stopped immediately there. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. This has been a long drive. you got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? Set. Green 39! Green 39! He'll look to throw. And probably the wise decision there. No one open. He just throws it away. And that keeps the field goal on the table as it's fourth down. And based on my math, they've only converted one time thus far in this game. So you can see the frustration starting to come out a little bit. Third downs, they've been a problem for them all game. They've got to start becoming solutions. And Bullock will put this one through. And they will stretch the lead now to 17-3. to A dozen plays on that drive that ends with the field goal. Let's go ahead and break out some of the old chestnuts here, right, partner? Keep the ball in front, rally to it, and make the tackle, right? No big plays given up. No balls over your head. Bend, don't break. Hold on, hold on. Chestnuts? Huh, you like Come that on, one? what does that mean, break out? The, just because you break you break chestnuts? I, I'm not sure about that, but I'm just going with they said that. I have no idea. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned they're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk, this is a big decision here. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go in the first half. Throwing on first down, it's Jackson. Caught by Snead over the middle. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. 
Now Jackson on second down. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. First down now, but that clock rolling. On first and ten, it's Jackson. And his throw is incomplete. This defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go awry. Seems to be the front and the back end. Pass rush, they've been able to get home, and they're taking the ball away in coverage as well. I love how you put it together. The front and back working in sync, only way to play good defense. Second and ten, here's Jackson again. Brought in left side by Sneed. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. And offensively, they'll take the timeout with six seconds left in the second quarter. Now Justin Tucker. He has hit from 61 in his career, so he has the leg for this. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt. And this is off the left upright. And it comes back. It's no good. And they will remain two scores down as the difference holds at 11. And this is one of the risks you run when you attempt a long field goal. If you miss, the defense takes over the spot of the placement. So now they've got a chance to get one more drive in before halftime. This is taken about seven yards deep. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. Final play of the first half, barring a penalty, as they come up on first and 10. And with time running down, they go down to a knee. So we've reached halftime here in the Queen City, and it's the Bengals leading this one. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, we'll get back to you guys in a moment. But first, the NFL season is in full swing. Let's show the good folks what we've got in store for us later this weekend here in week two. In the early window on Sunday, one of the best of the best happens up in Pittsburgh. A big one for the Steelers, as they'll have to do battle with the visiting Kansas City Chiefs. In the late afternoon games, the place to be might very well be Denver, Colorado, where it'll be the Broncos taking on the Oakland Raiders. And finally on Monday night, a good one in the NFC, Seahawks, Bears from Soldier Field. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a back-and-forth first half. Who can put it together in the second half? For the answer, we turn it back over to our broadcast team, of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Bengals set to receive. They have the lead and the football to begin quarter number three. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Out come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. Oh, this is a do that? I'm doing it now. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. Here's Jackson to throw. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. They get 14 on that one. That's good for a Baltimore first down. They go play action here on first down. If you're running out route, it's likely you're going to end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging picking it up and making sure it was a catch. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Let's go! Off the play fake, here's Jackson. 
His throw incomplete. The Alabama man, Dre Kirkpatrick, there on the coverage. And we just saw another example. These cornerbacks have played tight coverage all game long. Might start wanting to think about a few double, triple move routes to try and shake their guys. Chris, they have, you're right, they have had no room to breathe. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they Let's come up go. on third Three down. 19. Three 19. On third down, Jackson. Talent on the dump off. And a pretty little juke move there, but not a ton to show for it afterwards as he's brought down. It's a gain of five on the play, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. Do you like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion, and what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. Here's Sam Cook now, as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. So here are the Bengals now as they get their first possession of this second half. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. Yeah, how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some gratitude <laughs> by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. Complete to the right side. It's Eifert. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense where they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we can talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? Tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that'll pull you out of that spot they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. But it's hard to do because when you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards him. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. But we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. The Bengals on third down. They've had good success, five for eight to this point. This time they face a third and two. Here we go. They give to Mixon to try to pick it up. Whoosh. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. Give him 17 and a Cincinnati first down. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Let's Give it go. to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. Dumps it off to Mixon. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with the football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. A handoff to Mixon. He'll fight forward for a couple down inside the 40. We know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. They're going to look to throw. Over the middle, that's caught by Ross. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Now 
Bengals on third down. Six conversions and nine tries. They've done a great job of picking these up. This is third and four. Here we go now. Three, He'll drop to throw. And he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds. So a big call there. That brings up fourth. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. Here's Randy Bullock now as he'll go for the field goal. This will be kicked from the 42. It's a 52-yard attempt. And this is good. It was running out of gas there at the end, but he winds up getting just enough on it. And that will extend their lead even further. So put another three on the board. All things considered, a good opening drive to begin the third quarter. And as a defense, the way that this game is going, you're excited to see those points go on the board. Gives them a little bit of leeway to play with when they're out on the field. But they're real excited to see their offense score. Now they get to go out there and do their part. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now here come the Ravens. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Throwing now, Jackson on first down. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. You know, despite the scoreline, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made. And that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. Four down, four down. Shit. Here we go now. On second down, here's Jackson. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, Tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. This quarterback now six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. Set. Green 39! Green 39! Hot. Now a handoff for Dixon. And able to get a couple as he's across the 40 to the 41. Well, that didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just started in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. Here we go now. They'll run with Allen. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Here's Jackson underneath to Allen, and he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Call it a gain of five, and that's going to make it fourth down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Joe Mixon and the rest of his offense making their way back onto the field. He's had a good performance, moved the ball effectively on the ground. Of course, he has the one touchdown. And when you're able to move it as effectively as you've described, that leads to finding a way into the end zone, and now he's just trying to do it for a second time. And, of course, with that comes additional yardage. Yeah, looking for additional yardage, and again, that second score here in the third quarter. And a nice pickup as this one gets him to the 10-yard line. Five yards on the carry, good pickup on first down. Third quarter, and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. All right, here we go. Delayed game, off 
since. And that'll set him back five. Still second down. So the delay of game penalty moves it back five. That makes it second and ten. From deep in their own territory, they look to throw. And over the middle, it's LaFell. And he'll get it up a little shy of the 15. They'll spot him down at the 14-yard line. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there if he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback that has to slide and find open space to throw. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. The drive begins with a run by Dixon. And he'll take this one across the 45 up to about the 46-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. What's the old expression? Three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. Caught left side to Crabtree. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. On third down, that's Allen. And brought down, but not before he was able to break the tackle, and the extra effort moves the sticks. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. That's going to set him back five yards. Still first down. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. Now let's go. Blue Niners. Jackson from the shotgun. Looking for Snead, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Preston Brown, the linebacker. And his guys will take over at their own 44-yard line. All right, Brandon. Normally when you hear about guys making two interceptions in the game, you're thinking must be a free safety, maybe a corner. How about getting two picks out of one of your linebackers? Again, he's just in the right place at the right time. And that's another great play to come away with the football. Out comes this field general once more, leading his offense back onto the field. He's played well. Good first half. He's continued that here in the third quarter. But my question, when you're a head coach, what do you look at stat line-wise for your court? Do you go right to turnovers? You really do. As much as coaches don't want to talk about that, that's where it starts. When I played in college, our first rule for every game, the team... Tyler Eifert got his man. It's Eifert. And for a Cincinnati score. Tyler Eifert, his first touchdown here in the new campaign. And the Bengals add on to their lead. When they drew that up, I don't think they envisioned it ending in a house call. 
But he got him, took it all the way home. Really impressive run after the catch, wasn't it? That was a, that was really special by him. But let's face it, in today's NFL, those tight ends are often former wide receivers or maybe even sometimes bigger running backs. They just put them in a position to get a great matchup and make plays like that. Extra point up and good by Bullock. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. And they're able to get the connection on the long touchdown pass. And that's one of the easiest drive summaries you'll ever see. One play, touchdown. Bullock out now to kick this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, right, go. totally didn't affect Three, me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football Three, again. Nine, You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack him here. That throw good for four. It's second down. That time they hit him out of the slot on the drag. And that route takes some fortitude from the guy running it because he knows he's going through the briar patch, as I like to call it, right? He's trying to work his way through all that traffic and people wanting to put a little contact on it. Really well done. One quarter remains here in this Thursday night matchup. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Cincinnati. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. Second and six, just inside the 30. On second down, Jackson. It's a loss of seven. And now it's third down. The Ravens on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities. Three for nine. This is going to be third and 13. Jackson now. Allen here on the screen. And he goes nowhere. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. He went backwards five yards there on third down to break up forward. I love the intelligence the defense just showed there. Read their keys, saw the screen developing, Ran to it and smothered it. What a third down stop by them. Here's Sam Cook now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. And following that long touchdown pass, a one-play drive last time, to see if the defense, you, you know they're ready. They don't want that to happen again. And you would have thought they would have been ready the yeah, last that's time. That's, I mean, that's what you work on all the time. Make sure that no one gets behind you. That's the cardinal sin of defense, not giving up the long pass. They did. Let's see how they adjust. And he'll slip his way up across the 30 to the 32. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Once again, they run with Mixon. So he got three of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. Now let's go! Out of the gun now on third down. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? It creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. 
They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. They'll try again from the 20 on second and 10. Again on second and 10, it's Jackson. And he comes back with one complete. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. They get 14 on that one. That's good for a Baltimore first down. As far as tight ends go, this guy's not a speed burner. He's much more of an inline blocking type of a tight end. But how about this last play? Made a nice catch and picked up a first down. That's what impresses me about him. When he's called upon, usually gets it done. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now let's go. Blue landing. Throwing on first down, it's Jackson. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. All right, here we go. Boom, Jackson will throw again. He'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. The Raven passing game getting in sync. Another first down. They ran that one well. And not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. So two first downs, and that moves the ball to the 42 now, first and 10. All right, here we go. Now Jackson on first down, finding his safety valve here. That's complete. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Five yards on the pickup, and that'll make it second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. To throw again is Jackson. Sneed's got it. A really nice gain of 25 yards. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until now. they stop Three him, nine. why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. Nick Boyle, his first touchdown of the new season. And the Ravens cut into that lead. I wonder if he changed anything on his play sheet or they just executed better. Because they had two previous drives that ended in field goals. Before this one, they finally were able to put into the end zone. Well, whatever he did, speaking of the offensive coordinator, might be using that formula going forward. It worked there. Yeah, it worked very well. He... And his field general in pretty good sync right now. They're starting to move the ball well. Tucker with the extra point, and that will shave one more off this lead. The Bengal offense now gets set to head back out onto the field. Certainly want to avoid what they had to do last possession. That was punt the football because this, this game's starting to tighten up. In a basketball sense, you think about taking a little bit of the air out of the ball, right? Maybe milk some clock, limit the possessions. In this case, they might want to do the same thing but control the game offensively. Put together some first downs, put together a drive, and keep it away from them. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. 
Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. It's a loss of two, now third down. Brandon, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. On third down, Nixon. No game there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. He has elite instincts from his linebacker spot. He's able to diagnose the run and flies in like a missile to stop that one behind the line of scrimmage. Here's Kevin Huber now. He's been terrific so far. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. <laughs> Spins away. 12 yards on the return that time. And the Ravens, they'll take over. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. On first and ten, it's Jackson. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. So the first down screen pass, good for five. At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my specials, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. No doubt. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. From the gun, it's Jackson. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. Fourth quarter, every drive's so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. Jackson on first down. Caught by Sneed over the middle. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off. Usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. That catch puts him over 70 yards receiving now as he's got a first down. But correct me if I'm wrong, you know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. So two first downs, and that moves the ball to the 42 now, first and 10. They'll throw on first down with Jackson. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back. Complete. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Give him nine on the play, and that'll make it second and short. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running back. And for a third time tonight, he's intercepted. Picked off by the Alabama man, Drake Kirkpatrick. And he will score. Touchdown. Cincinnati. And that one will pretty much erase any hopes of a fourth quarter comeback. With emphasis, interception, return for touchdown. Door closed, locked, reinforced.
Now Bullock to add the extra point. Bullock good on the extra point. And the lead now to three touchdowns in 21. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. This fielded at the two. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shot at the 23-yard line. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And last time, decent field position through the pick six. Obviously costly. But they can't afford to just bunker in now. All right, they, good field position means go ahead and attack on offense. Let's Try and go. press the advantage Three, a little bit. They just have to be better with the football on this possession. So the last one didn't bother you too much last time. No, because it's, it's exactly what you're supposed to do. You can't have good field position and not try to take advantage of it. Sometimes the defense makes a good play, too. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better right, and be go. ready for the Blue next time, Rider. hopefully with a chance to win? Now it's Jackson. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. They don't get the hook up there, but you really have to marvel at how precise he's been throwing the football these last couple weeks. Oh, that's the perfect word for it, precise, because if you're at 70% or better two weeks in a row, you have a job as long as you want one in this league, won't you? I mean, let's face it's not just West Coast offense either. He's putting the ball down the field as well. Jackson looking to throw on third, and he's got Snead. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. He's up to 87 yards receiving now, and it's a first down. Time for a break. We'll come back and wrap up garbage time after this. So it's Raven football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Here's Jackson on first down. Crabtree with it over the middle. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. It's a pickup of 11 at a Baltimore first down. Now a play fake here on first down. He's going to let it fly. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. That one was intended for John Brown. That'll bring up second down. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone. Eventually, that becomes man on man. And you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Jackson throwing again over the middle here to Brown and he'll get it down here to the 43 eight yards on the completion but now they face third down now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set here's Jackson to throw oh there's that man again it's complete and he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39 yard line it'll be a pickup of four good enough to earn him yet another first down now Jackson. A good pick up there, 26 yards. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. From the red zone now, here's Jackson on first down. He's going to be sacked. Back at the 23-yard line. Carlos Dunlap. In there to make the sack. He buries him for a loss of 10. Now Jackson on second down. Underneath to Allen. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. This offense, two for two on third downs on this drive. They're in for a tough test here, though. Third and long. Now let's go! Blue. 
From the gun, Jackson. And almost intercepted. Would have been a huge pick in the end zone, but as it stands, that brings up fourth. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. Well, in the grand scheme of things, those three points likely not going to matter much, but I guess they get a little closer, a little more respectability. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been outplayed all game long, but like my mom used to tell me all the time before I went out, dress up a little bit, son. Make yourself respectable. <laughs> and that's what they're doing here. They're just dressing up the final score. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. They have the dream scenario you hope for coming into the game. Just one kneel here, and this game should be over. And it's always the final play of preparation each week. The practicing of the kneel down formation, the victory formation. We've got a game in hand, and that's all they're going to want to do now. They'll put someone back deep just in case something goes haywire. But all in all, take the snap, three, kneel three. down, and, and shake hands. Yes, get out. Nixon hit, and all the ball is out. And it's picked up by the Ravens. And he'll get in. Touchdown, Baltimore. This defense, Charles, they needed some type of a spark to help get them back in this game. I think they just got their spark. No doubt about it. You know, that's all they discussed. How can we get ourselves moving again? How can we get our team going? This definitely qualifies. Now Tucker to add the PAT. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and that will get him one closer. So not only the cough up, but then the pick up on the other side, the scoop, and the score the other way, the fumble return for a touchdown. So time definitely not in their favor, down two scores, but they'll try the onside kick. And this is gonna be recovered by the Bengals' hand team. And they're going to hang on and win this game. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. Now Joe Mixon. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. And one of the whistles for a timeout. So they'll stop the clock here in a game that's been decided in the closing seconds. The Bengals hoping Mixon improves on the numbers from his rookie year. He's back there again on first down. Down to a knee here. The defense still with a couple of timeouts. We'll see if they want to use them. And one of the whistles for a timeout. So they'll stop the clock here in a game that's been decided in the closing seconds. The Bengals go down to a knee in the victory formation. Now we'll get whistles, and they've signaled for a timeout. Not sure I see the logic in this, but we'll get a stoppage anyway with five seconds remaining. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. Down to a knee one more time, and that should just about do it. Well, I know at points in this when you wanted to close your eyes because of all the points that were being put on the scoreboard, you're a defensive guy, but it was a fun little track meet, wasn't it? It was, and you know the people who really enjoyed this game? They're the ones that like going to batting practice at the Major League Baseball <laughs> parks, right? Seeing the 14-11 to 11 game, that sort of deal, that's right up their alley with what we saw in this one. So for Cincinnati, it's a win here in their home opener as they move to 2-0. And now they'll have a few extra days here before they face the Panthers next week. Meanwhile, for the Ravens, they'll fall to 1-1. One and, one. and they'll have a tough one at home next week against the Denver Broncos.
So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. It's a win for the Bengals as we say so long from Cincinnati.